how would you try to correct a Mormon? Well, first, uh, to begin to answer this question, I would argue that whenever we encounter someone that we disagree with, the fundamental attitude we should possess is an attitude of love and of charity and of understanding. The goal is not simply to win an argument. The goal is to try to bring people ever closer to the truth. We are trying to encounter what is the underlying reality of being. We're trying to encounter God here. And so it doesn't matter like if I'm have this hold this opinion or that opinion. The goal is to enter into truth. And so if we enter into our conversations with that mentality, not I'm going to convince you that you're wrong and dumb, but I'm going to try to seek with you a greater understanding of the divine, I think that will be like the first step, the very first step. Now, specifically regarding Mormonism, if I were to try to dialogue with someone and try to come to a greater understanding, I think where I would start would actually be the historical claims of Mormonism. The number one thing that I, I can't wrap my mind around and I disagree with uh, Mormonism on is the idea of the great apostasy. Um, Mormons say that as soon as the last apostle died, immediately error entered into the church. And because of that, as soon as uh, uh, Christianity started to spread, it spread forth lies, it was spread forth inaccuracies and things were just, just wrong. And that's why Joseph Smith had to come forward and say, this is what Jesus really meant. I, I find that to be unphilosophic and also ahistorical. I, I don't see that to actually be grounded in what we see in history. When we see the apostles die, we see the church continue on in spite of persecutions. We see people going to their deaths for the faith. I mean, people wouldn't immediately admix error to something that they're willing to die for. They have dedicated their lives to this. And so the testimony of the martyrs is that this is what Christ taught. Um, and then as soon as persecution ends, we see the unbroken teaching of the church continue to this day. I mean, every Sunday we proclaim the creed, and usually it's the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. That creed was made back in the year 325. For the past 1700 years, Christians have claimed this creed. To say that immediately after the last apostle died, that there was a, a, a mixture of error thrown into Christianity, makes no sense to me. Like, the martyrs died for this. The church has held true to the faith of the martyrs. It, it, it just, just doesn't make sense. I mean, even, uh, for example, St. Uh, Ignatius um, of uh, Antioch, who dies in the year 107 or 105, it depends on which uh, star historian you're looking to, he is said to have sat at the feet of Polycarp, who sat at the feet of John the Apostle. So we're talking about a guy who is two people separated from Jesus himself. And Ignatius proclaims a Catholic faith. You can pick up his seven letters and you can see him talking about the Eucharist. You can see him talking about baptism. You can see him talking about bishops. You can see him showing forth the Catholic faith as we understand it today, all the way back 1900 years ago. So if I were to try to have a dialogue with a Mormon, that would be my first point um, that I would bring up. This idea of this unbroken uh, teaching of the church going back to the very beginning um, and any sort of great apostasy seems to be ahistorical and nonsensical. Um, I would then also make some points about uh, the historicity of uh, the Bible. I'd probably make some textual criticism as well when uh, Joseph Smith begins to make his own new translation. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense because all of the early textual manuscripts we have seem to be going back to the very beginning. Like we have very ancient texts and they show an unbroken chain. I, I, I don't think that makes much sense either. There's a few um, historical claims in the Book of Mormon. I'd probably point to those. I, I would make this all about sort of um, a discussion of philosophy and using philosophy and reason as the arbiters of our conversation and these sorts of things would be my first points of contention um, that I would bring up when having a dialogue.